Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread, that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament, Numbers, chapter 21. From, from Mount Hor, the Israelites set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom, but the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water and we teach us this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent, and set it on the pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and leave. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it on a pole, and, where, and whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and leave. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Psalm appointed today is Psalm 107. We will read responsively. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and, and his mercy endures, endures forever. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim that, that he has redeemed them from, from the hand of the foe. foe. He gathered them out of the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some were fools and took to rebellious ways. They were afflicted because of their sins. They abhorred all manner of food and drew near to death's door. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them and saved them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and the wonders he does for his children. Let them offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving and tell off his sacks with shouts of joy. The epistle is from Ephesians chapter 2. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature of children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved 
and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by his grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our sequence hymn is Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, and whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. It had been a long, long time in the wilderness. It was long and difficult, and no, unknowingly, it was going to be even much longer than they thought. During our reading today, Moses finds the people rather difficult and hard to work with because they are thirsty and are very hungry, maybe even starving. 
The city slickers from Egypt are not used to caravan living, let alone camping in tents and living off the land. They grumble and they complain and they wish they had never left the abundant supermarkets of Egypt. But Moses, the intercessor, goes in prayer to the Creator, and through that prayer and those prayers that follow by Moses, the Creator God brings water gushing forth from the rock at Meribah. The loving God Creator provides a rock that rolls with them that whenever they stop provides water, drinking water. And on one occasion, he, he, uh, the loving God Creator provides a flock of quail that come into the camp and just land, waiting to be captured and eaten. And then, of course, there is the great miracle of the manna in the wilderness. A daily occurrence for 40 years, almost, of this miracle food that nourishes and sustains the people. And all they have to do is gather it day by day, a rather simple task. But they are still in the wilderness, and life is difficult, even with the daily manna which is provided. But they know that God is with them, and they know that God cares for them, and they know that God loves them because of these events. Now, 1,250 years later, the people, the Hebrews, are still in the wilderness. But this time, it's the wilderness of the law, which has become so complex that individuals can no longer understand the law, they can no longer sense that God is a loving, caring God. All they seem to get from all of these laws now is that God rules and he punishes them if they don't follow the law to the letter or the jot in the tittle. A lone bachelor carpenter from Nazareth enters the waters of the Jordan River with John the Baptist. And in that process, he is anointed by the Holy Spirit and then goes off into the desert wilderness where he prays and fasts for 40 days or a long time. You might have thought that the people of the Exodus were hungry, but Jesus was famished. He was starving. And when he is challenged by Lucifer to satisfy hunger, by turning the rocks of the Palestine desert into food, Jesus quotes him Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 5. People do not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. While Jesus is in the wilderness, there is no manna. There are no miracles to ease his hunger pangs. Just the knowledge that God loves him and nourishes him just the same way as God loved and nourished the people of the Exodus. And that perhaps is not quite easy to understand. People struggling in the wilderness of the law gather on a mountainside to hear this carpenter who speaks with authority. And on that mountainside, perhaps he tells them other great things. He tells them great things, and perhaps one of the things he told them was this. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink. Look at the birds of the air that neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value? than the birds. But all these people gathered on the mountainside listening to this carpenter speaking these words with authority and wisdom. They sit and they listen and the day wears on and they become hungry. 
Hungry, mind you, not famished, not ravenous, not starving, just kind of merely hungry. And so now it's time for Jesus to demonstrate the care and love of their God. This teacher takes a few loaves of bread and a couple of fish, blesses them, and many more than 5,000 people are fed. And there's even baskets of food left over. The feeding of these men and women and children and probably a few dogs is all very miraculous. And it strikes a deep chord and gives us a foretaste of Holy Eucharist and Communion. The people on the hillside experienced the fact now that their Heavenly Father cared for them and that their Heavenly Father feeds them. Just as the Father feeds the birds of the air of which Jesus had just preached. And it was demonstrated with no uncertain terms that God loves God provides, and God sustains. Now that sounds very familiar to what Julian of Norwich was saying last week when we were doing our study, which God made, God loves, and God sustains. A few months later, the people are still in the wilderness, which seems to be getting more and more dense as Jesus and his closest disciples and friends are caught up in this vortex that leads to the betrayal of Jesus and to his death. So in the eye of this tornado, this tornado of his betrayal, Jesus gathers his closest friends together into an upper room. He takes bread and he takes wine the bread and the wine of the Passover season, raises them in offering to the Creator and blesses them. Jesus then distributes the elements of his body and blood around the table as once again, but differently this time, sacramentally he declares God makes and loves, God provides, and God sustains. Several days after this event, the people are still in the wilderness, which now seems to be getting impenetrable. Because once again, the Roman Empire has broken them and broken them down. And once again, the Jewish religious institution has taken away their beloved teacher. Jesus had been crucified and Jesus had been buried. Those chosen friends that had gathered around the table now had scattered and were in hiding. But as promised, Jesus appears to them again several times. And once again, during these appearances, Jesus feeds them physically with bread and fish, providing once again that God loves, God provides, and God sustains. Well, now it's 2,000 plus years later, and we as a people have been in the wilderness a long time. And the wilderness now seems to be getting denser, harder to travel through. We have the wilderness of climate change and the breakdown of the cycles of nature into chaotic weather patterns. We have wars and rumors of wars. We have the wilderness of financial hard time for people and churches and nonprofits of all kind. We are in the wilderness of stressed family relationships. We are in the wilderness of the loss of friends and those face to face meetings and gatherings that we used to enjoy. We are in the wilderness of doubt. We are in the wilderness of consumerism, which has been magnified with much grief. We are in the wilderness of a weird election season. 
We are in the wilderness of a shaky future. We are in the wilderness because many are lost and they just don't know which way to go. This modern wilderness makes for very tough going. It is difficult and not easy living in these times. Some of today's pilgrims, some of the day's travelers through the wilderness are the good people of Good Samaritan that are gathered in a small number today within this large sanctuary that used to be filled with a couple of hundred people who no longer attend. Just as others are gathered in churches around the world at this very moment. Those people gathered in churches are gathered there because they know and they experience God's love for them. As demonstrated in the Incarnation, the teaching and preaching of Jesus, the passion of Jesus, his death and resurrection and ascension. They've come because it is here in Christian community that they best experience God's love as they gather around the altar table or as they gather around those circular tables during social hour. Christ is present to us here today in this California metro Silicon Valley area. Just as he was to the people on that mountainside, just as he was to those disciples in the upper room, just as he was to those apostles on the lake shore when he feeds them after his resurrection. Jesus is present to feed us with his own body and blood so that we might know and experience that God made us, God loves us, God provides for us, and God sustains us no matter what kind of wilderness we traverse. Because don't we, every Sunday, and probably, hopefully sometimes during the week, don't we often pray, give us our daily bread? Turn to that opening collect in your book on page 4 top of the page. And let's read this or pray this together. Gracious Father, whose blessed blessed Son, Son, Jesus Jesus Christ, Christ, came down down from from heaven heaven to be the the true bread which gives gives life to the world. world. Evermore give us this bread that that he may live live in us us, and we in him. him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. invite you to stand and recite together the words of our faith on page 10, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, Father the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth. earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ, his his only only Son, our Lord. Lord. He was was conceived conceived by the power of the Holy Holy Spirit Spirit, and and born of the Virgin Virgin Mary. Mary. He suffered suffered under under Pontius Pontius Pilate, Pilate, was crucified, crucified, died, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. dead. On the third day he He rose again. He ascended into heaven heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Father. He will come come again to judge the living and the dead. dead. I believe in the Holy Holy Spirit, Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, Church, communion of saints, saints, the the forgiveness of sins, sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
embraced by God's word, let us intercede for all those in need, saying, Have mercy, O Lord. For the church, that all those to be baptized at Easter may see through the dazzling attractions of sin and rejoice only in God's marvelous gift, we pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O Lord. For the community of nations, that the worth of every life may compel us on the way to solidarity and peace, we pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O Lord. Lord. For exiles and refugees, that all who are homeless because of war or hunger, because of the greed or hatred of others, because of disabilities, may find places of rest and kindness, we pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O Lord. Lord. For those who struggle with addictions, <clears throat> that they may find strength and love for the simple gifts of God, we pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O Lord. Lord. For this assembly, God's handiwork, that our steps be directed in waves of peace that lead us to the side of those the world despises, and that we may that we name these rejected ones our brothers and sisters, we pray. Have mercy, Have mercy O Lord. Lord. In our diocese, Diocesan cycle of prayer and ordination anniversaries, we pray for Stephan Ministries, priests, deacons, and all who lend pastoral care. For Linda J. McConnell, let us pray to the Lord. Have, Have mercy, O Lord. Lord. Let us pray for all those groups that share our facilities and ministries. We especially pray for Alcoholics Anonymous, Al Anon, Midori Banzai, Westside Sunnymont Preschool. San Jose Young Knock Korean Presbyterian Church and Fun Time Singers. Let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy. For our parish family and friends, and especially those who are commended to our prayers on our prayer list. Those with medical conditions Leanne, Marilyn, Arlene, Tony, Harry, Alex, Betsy. Kristen and Linda, Father Ernie, Deacons Robert and Joan, Amy. Those experiencing difficult times, Sarah, Sharon, Brianne, Marge, Darby, Leah, Paul, Ella, Michelle and Robbie, Sheila, Sean, Cynthia and Michael, Chuck, and Sandra and Stan. Those living with chronic illness, Bob, Shirley, Joyce, Ron, David, David, Mary, Linda, Judy, Cheryl, Melba, Mary Jo, and all those who are living with uncontrolled pain, Roy. For aging elders and those who are restricted in travel, Jerry, Francis and Jack, Lynn and Carol. For our shared ministries, San Jose State University Campus Ministries, especially for the Jewish students and faculty and the Latino con congregation at Trinity. For those, who we also, for those who we are also thinking about and praying for, including Kathy, Bishra, Chris, Charlie, Jane, Bill, Marilyn, Michelle, Creighton, Chris, Valeria, and family. We also pray for the war in Ukraine and the Holy Land, victims of gun violence and drug overdoses and their families, all people and creatures who are suffering from extreme weather, all first responders, those who, are, who serve our country and veterans, all those who protect and care for creation and for all that are traveling who are traveling. Who else shall we pray for? I pray for students this morning at San Jose State who are facing now a midterms and uh, also for students who are suffering with depression. What are we thankful for? For blooming trees and the flowers of spring day. Let us pray for those whom we love but have joined the heavenly course of all the saints. Deborah Bryant, Janie Adams, <sighs> Brian.
Brooke Fitzroy Roberts, Wayne Roberts, Ethelie Roberts, Yolanda Roberts, Satya Deb Mizra, Aunt Mary, Robert Church, Wilson Connor, Yvonne McLe McLean, Bernice Wood, Carl Ketchum, Robert McLean, Jane Hu, Lillian Hu, and all former members of our congregation and family members of current members who have joined the heavenly chorus, praising God. Almighty and eternal God, creator of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now as we take a moment of silence for personal reflection, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess, we confess that we have that sinned, we have sinned against, against you in thought, God, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. May peace prevail on earth. If you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go first, be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift.
things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his, gr by his grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. infinite love you made us for yourself and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ your only and eternal son to share our human nature to live and die as one of us to reconcile us to you the God and Father of all he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks to you he gave it to them and said drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins whenever you drink it do this in the remembrance of me therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith christ has died christ is risen Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit. To be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. And therefore, let us keep the feast. These are God's holy gifts.
These are God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Take them in remembrance that Christ gives himself for you. And feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Those who are receiving from the common cup may come forward at this time.
For those who are not present at the altar today, but are maybe watching now or in the future, let us pray with them the act of spiritual communion. In blessed union, blessed, in union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, remembering particularly our own parish, we long to offer you praise and thanksgiving. For all the blessed life, <clears throat> for the redemption one for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. We believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and we pray you come into our hearts. We unite ourselves with you and embrace you with all our heart, our souls, and our minds. Let nothing separate us from you. Let us serve you in this life until by your grace we come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. And in thanksgiving for the gift of Holy Communion, we pray, Eternal God, Heavenly Father, Father you have graciously, graciously accepted, accepted us as, as living members of your Son, our, our Savior, Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, be ready to receive your announcement. <laughs> Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, today is our first day of the Good Samaritan Reading Club. So um, after church, uh, after the service, go on over and get your coffee and your snack and go over to the copier room, which is right off the office, and you can access it by the back door. So I hope to see you there. Thank you. I was just thinking maybe we could um, figure out the coffee pot over there. People could just bring in a cup so they don't have it. And there's obviously several other important announcements in the bulletin. Uh, there'll be a, uh, Father Roger will be presenting another Lenten edition of Expanding Our Mind and Spirit next week since Nurse Deborah is in London. Life is tough all over. Um, Working on our doctor degree, Yeah, really. Um, and uh, you'll see the, you have the flyer about the Easter flower dedications. And uh, got an explanation in there of Rachel's new working office hours. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, please pay attention to that. And we are working on having the ability to have calls that come in on those two days when she's not in the office uh, forwarded to her cell phone. That's, in the, that's a work in progress and uh, a new discussion group. Um, two other items. wanted to thank you again to uh, Heather for her prelude. We didn't get to see it. And uh, it was uh, actually both my wife and my sister's birthdays this week. Uh, and um, uh, uh, Sharon is here. She has something special she'd like to share about that. But first, we have to sing her happy birthday. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Sharon, happy birthday to you. Did you want to use, you need to use them. Good morning and thank you for the lovely song. Um, I've been blessed being a, a lifelong Episcopalian and doing lots of travel to in many locations and countries visit Episcopal churches, including following the donkey into the cathedral um, in Melbourne on Palm Sunday a few years back, which is extraordinary. Um, but one of the traditions that I picked up from one of the other churches I visited was they had a special um, routine, policy, habit um, for birthdays. And most of the places, as you might gather, have um, food pantries and such. So the... the um, Tradition is that you bring elements for the food pantry the number of your age. 
So that's why I was using this little cart, because <laughs> 70 cans of tuna are really heavy. So, <laughs> so I will be leaving those in the office for Rachel to put out in the, the little pantry box um, as needed. Um, but thank you for your acknowledgment of my birthday, and I offer this for my birthday. Thank you. My birthday is April 5th, and I'll be on the street, so I can't bring in a truckload of <laughs> So she knows not to put all 70 cans of tuna in there at once, right? <laughs> uh, just to expand a little bit on the announcement, okay. Um, that one's already been expanded on. Um, Easter flower dedications are but a little bit different this year. So we're not asked, we're not going to decorate the whole front of the church with Easter lilies this year. We found a lovely picture of this altar back in the sacristy, and it has a front on it which has been in hiding for many years. And we're bringing out this Easter frontal, which is a very beautiful white frontal with a rising sun in the center of it. And they had a picture back there of the front of the altar decorated with all kinds of colorful flowers. Yeah. So we're going to do a mixture this year of colorful, colorful flowers and Easter lilies. So if you're willing to participate in that, you know, use the envelope to give us a little bit of money to, to do that. It'll be a little different this year, and I think it'll be kind of fun to see it that yeah. way. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the announcements. Um, the other announcement is this is the week of the annual clergy retreat for the diocese. So I will be gone Friday afternoon, Thursday, Friday, and I believe Saturday morning. And Kathy will be gone. I'll be gone Friday, Saturday, and a little bit of Sunday, but not enough time to get back from St. Clair's. <laughs> okay. So Friday, Saturday, and a little bit of Sunday, Kathy yeah. will be gone. I oh, will definitely miss her uh, next week here at the altar. Yes, I um, So I just wanted to let you know, even though we are on retreat, we are still reachable with those marvelous little cell phones. So if there's an emergency or something, do not hesitate to call. Also, we are coming to the close of preparing our annual parochial report. And hopefully it will be finished today. <laughs> and... Uh, Hopefully, I said. Yeah. Finish. Maybe a little bit of typing has to be done yet. That's basically finished. And I want, want you to realize how many hours Stan has spent on this. Yeah. How many days Stan has spent on this. I understand. And um, along with Kathy and uh, both of the, mainly those two, and Godwin, the treasurer, has spent a lot of time uh, trying to get all the finances updated because. We learned some things about preparing the financial report that we never knew before. Mm. Uh, thanks to Joanna Tree who came and visited us. We learned some things that will save us money in the long run, which is what's really important. So um, I think we should applaud uh, Stan and Godwin and Kathy. Because we have I applaud them heartily. <laughs> so um, I think that's all the expansion of the announcements I need to do. So our recessional hymn is Lift High the Cross, page 21.
now let us go forth rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.